Well, hello everybody, and welcome to this. And this will be my review um, of Captain America. I was waiting for Nightmare Baller to do his review of Captain America, even though his wound up being more of a fanboy rant. Though mine will be too, to be honest. Um, but I wanted to do mine and then do a video response to his, because I knew eventually he would be doing one. So, or I hoped. But um, it's been a while since the movie came out. It's been a while since I've seen the movie. And so this will be spoilerific, but I'm sure everyone that has seen the movie will probably have already seen it, so I don't think that's a big deal, so just a warning ahead of time. So anyways, uh, Captain America. Let me let me start off um, talking about the character itself and the fact that I am not the biggest fan of Captain America currently. Um, I, I was never a big fan of the ultimate version of Captain America. He was way too U.S. agent-like for my taste, and more of what I think you would get if most writers put Frank Castle as uh, Captain America, where he would just he just he came off kind of assholey to me in the Ultimate Universe. Then you have regular Captain America, who over I, I would say depending on who wrote him, I, I, I've not been a big fan. Sometimes like during Civil War, I really liked Cap, but then after Civil War, I was like eh, and before Civil War, I was like eh. Um, just it just really depends because I, I think I always think people kind of I don't know they, they, they don't write him where you need to write him in a way where he you realize right away that this is Captain America that this is the hero of heroes in the Marvel Universe and that you know he is willing to do whatever it takes to to win not where you have like Batman Batman would might go into a no-win situation with a plan to get out of it. Cap might do that, but at the same time, he might go into a knowing full well that there's no way he's going to get out of it and not care. And so that's, to me, him and Superman are kind of the same way. So going into this, I was really kind of worried about how they were going to write him and exactly how he was going to be. Um, I had a big fear he was going to be much more like the ultimate uh Captain America, which I wasn't really keen on, so, but that's not what we got, luckily enough. So, what we got was a very interesting movie, because I really think after watching the movie, I thought this almost right after watching it, that, you know, the only reason I think I got a PG-13 rating, I would say, was maybe three or four scenes, and those three or four scenes could easily have been cut out of the movie and not affected the story at all. Um, you know, and one of them was, you know, uh, just kind of crazy over the top, uh, hydro violent or hydra guys getting killed and Nazi guys getting killed. I think that's the only reason it got a PG-13 rating. And that's kind of weird because I really think that this movie could have easily been PG and, and would have been, uh, not that that would probably would have helped it, because I know why movie studios don't like doing PG movies, because it seems as a kiddie movie, um, quote unquote, which is too bad, because one of my favorite comic book movies, even though I, I wouldn't say it's one of the best, and I don't think this is one of the best movies, but one of my favorite comic book movies is The Phantom, um, which, uh, with Billy Zane, I, I really like that, I really think it, it, it caught kind of what The Phantom was, and, and kind of the fun that a superhero movie needs to be, because I always think a superhero movie does need to have a little bit of fun to it. But, that's beside the point. On to the movie, because I've rambled about enough stuff. But So I really like this, because again, I, as I said, I don't think it's the best superhero movie ever made, um, but I think as far as what they did, and, and with all the concerns I had going into it, I was thoroughly surprised. Basically, Captain America's origin story, which I think even people who just went to go see the movie knew, okay, well, Captain America's or origin story is he was around in World War II, somehow got frozen, and wakes up in modern times. So how do we do that? And pretty much the movie starts out not even really talking about that, just going straight to the point. Um, some scientist guys uh, are called in. They find this what looks to be a spaceship, maybe, you're not quite sure what it is, it's this thing, and inside this thing is, uh, they find, you don't see them find Cap necessarily, but you see them find the shield, and then they go back to 
World War II, and Steve Rogers before he becomes Captain America, really kind of showing him. And they did a really good job. The, the technique they used to uh, show uh, Steve is just this really scrawny, sickly type guy who all he wants to do is he wants to, uh, you know, join the army so he can uh, go fight the Nazis because, as he says in the movie, um, he doesn't like bullies no matter who they are. So, which is cool because that's one of the things I don't like about Ultimate Captain America is I think sometimes he's a bully. So, here is Cap and um, he's trying to enlist to become, to join the army and, and not able to because he's too sickly. He's tried a thousand times. His buddy Bucky um, just enlisted. He's going overseas. Just got his orders and basically he's going to join the unit that uh, Steve's dad was part of during World War One, I, I believe is what they said, and died during World War One, I, I think. And he's all sad, and so then they go on a double date to the World Fair that uh, you saw in the Iron Man movie, which was a nice little segue in which we see Tony's dad, uh, and he's very much he's. You can kind of see why Tony is kind of the way he is, though um, Howard Stark is very much, very, very, I mean, this is like, uh, this is Howard Hughes, this is like, oh, by the way, we're going to have Howard Hughes in our movie, which is kind of what Howard Stark is supposed to be anyways, and what and who Tony Stark is supposed to be, supposed to be like a modern day Howard Hughes, so that was cool. Also, during that scene when they're at this World Fair, you get... Um, there's not a lot of, of course, cameos in this movie, only because, you know, it's kind of like, who would people know? But probably a cameo that I know Nightmare missed, I think the first three times he saw the movie, which is kind of surprising, is during the World Fair, there's actually a cameo of the original Human Torch. In Marvel Universe, there's two Human Torches. There's one from World War II, and there's one from the Fantastic Four. The one from World War II is basically a robot. And if you watch the movie, there looks to be like this vacuum cube. And in the vacuum cube, there's this, what looks to be a mannequin, this metal mannequin with a suit on. And that is the original Human Torch. So that was kind of cool. I was kind of like, ooh, look, it's the Human Torch. <clears throat> other than that, um, that's really the only, other than one more major uh, kind of cameo. But that's pretty much the only one. Um, the, the professor who is head of the... Uh, Super Soldier Project kind of finds him there because he tries to enlist even there and uh, he says okay you want to fight the Nazis you have a good heart you come with me and the whole point is, is that he's a good guy and the professor wants someone to be a who is a good guy who is a who he thinks has a good heart is going to do the right thing because uh, the the Red Skull, who has already taken a earlier version of the Super Soldier formula, is of course working for the Nazis and they need something to counter counteract that and he wants something opposite of what the Red Skull is. So they go through all this, you start to see, you know, uh, more of heroic, the heroic qualities of Steve and until we get to where he turns into Captain America, he uses this the Super Soldier uh, serum turns into Cap. Um, professor gets killed, uh, and he stops the Nazis who killed the professor. And but Tommy Lee Jones, who's in this movie and plays a general, uh, does a really good job. I, I think he was pretty good at his job, even though he was just playing himself to the point, to the most part, for the most part. Um, and you start to see a love interest go. They, you know, he's now ready because he's now Cap. He's now you know, use the super soldier serum, and they're basically going to use him now to sell uh, military bonds. And so you have this whole weird kind of thing where he's going around entertaining people, trying to get people to buy bonds, and they have a song, and this is the only reason why I bring it up, because by damn, this song, this song needs to be nominated for an Academy Award, because normally, you know, we don't get musicals. This was a musical number in this, in this, and it was actually pretty good. It fit the movie perfect. It was a take on the old, you know, war bond type uh, commercials that maybe you've seen, um, you know, with people play before. It's pretty good stuff. Um, you actually get to see kids uh, reading a Captain America comic book. You see kids, uh, uh, you, they do a whole thing where you've got this actor playing uh, 
Hitler, and you see Cap um, punching Hitler out, knocking Hitler out. It's a pretty famous scene. Um, they show the comic of that as well. So that's pretty cool. Then he goes overseas. He's trying to do the uh, entertain the troops, which fails miserably because they're like, who are you? Um, no one cares who you are, blah, blah, blah. But his buddy Bucky, he finds out, um, got captured with the entire unit. And so he wants to do something, so he basically uh, steals, I think, a motorcycle and goes and frees his buddy. And then Captain America is truly born. And we also get to see the Howling Commandos, which was a nice other, which is really the only other cameo uh, in the movie. And from there, this leads up to the big fight with uh, the Red Skull, his love interest with Peggy, which... Um, is good because of the end, because at the end of the movie we do get some deep blue hero shit, which is what you need with Cap, and we get that at the end of the movie where he basically sacrifices himself um, to save the United States. And that's the movie, pretty much. And then if you've seen the Ultimates, if you've read the Ultimates, um, pretty much they took right out from the Ultimate comic how they revived him, uh, tried to make it look like he was, uh, you know, that they revived him, um, and he basically escapes. In this, though, they, they tried to make it seem like he was still back in the, the, the... Nothing really had happened. He woke up. He was still in the 1940s. And uh, he escapes, realizes something's wrong because they're playing a, uh, a live uh, baseball broadcast that he was at. So that didn't work out so well. So he escapes. We finally see... Uh, we finally see Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury. He walks up um, after he's kind of escaped, and and that's kind of the movie. And then at the very, very end of the movie, instead of having you know the secret scene that all of these movies have had, um, instead we get the preview, the teaser for the Avengers. And I can say point blankly that I am ex that that made me super excited just to see them all in a movie. And it's kind of sad that somehow Marvel was able to pull off a, a Avengers movie before DC was able to pull out a Justice League movie, given the fact that, you know, in pop culture, Justice League's been around since the 70s, um, much, you know, and much more prominent than what the Avengers have been, so that's kind of, it's kind of surprising to me, but that's beside the point. But the movie overall, I would say, is really good, um, the special effects are pretty good, um, Cap is Cap, which is what you want. Bucky dies, which is good. Um, or does he die? We don't know because they don't actually show him die. And, you know, it is Bucky. But um, um, Bucky is different in this, I guess I should say. Bucky's older. He's basically his best friend, not some kid, which probably comes off a little better than, um, than you know, Bucky as a kid. But other than that, I, I thought the movie was really good. I thought it did exactly what it needed to do. I thought it set up the um, the Avengers very well. The if, if you've seen the movies, the, uh, the Thor movie, at the very end of the Thor movie, you saw this cube, which is the cosmic cube, which is kind of this all-powerful thing, is the best way to put it. I mean, it, it's very much kind of what you want it to be. It's, it, it's the ultimate MacGuffin, and the movie really centers around that. So, you know, just as Iron Man 2 kind of led into Thor, this, you know, you're kind of getting the backstory of what this cube was that you saw in the, uh, at the end of Thor, because that's kind of what Red Skull, and Red Skull was awesome in this movie, by the way, and we do get Nazis, and, we, and Hydra is part of the Nazis, and it's, it's, that part of it was really well handled. Um, the cube, as I said, is basically this energy source, but it's so much, if, if you know what the cube is, you know it's far more than just that. And the way that Red Skull is defeated pretty much guarantees, if you know what the Red Skull, or if you know what the cube is, that we're going to get the Red Skull back. So, that was good. Just everything about this movie was just, was just good. As again, I, I wouldn't call it great, but I would call it really good. Um, definitely worth checking out. Um, you know, a very fun which is not something that, you know, you normally get. I, I think, I liked Thor a lot, but I wouldn't necessarily call Thor fun. I think it was kind of, it was a good movie, but I, I wouldn't call it a fun movie. I wouldn't call the Batman movies fun movies. I don't think I would call the Iron Man movies necessarily fun movies. This was much more of a fun, go, you know, go have a good time popcorn movie. And really, I think that's what it needed to be. It was it was just a lot of fun, and I think that is a very, very good thing. 
But um, that's kind of my review. That's kind of my thoughts on the movie. I, I don't think I didn't write anything down, so I kind of rambled a bit. But I'm not quite sure. I think that's pretty much everything I can think of as far as what I liked about the movie. There wasn't much I didn't like, to be honest. Um, I mean, there was there was some cheesy stuff, but the cheesy stuff kind of fit because they were kind of you know they were in the 40s and it was kind of cheesy kind of 40s stuff. And the fact that you know he, um, the whole you know the the fact that they really set up the relationship with him and Peggy, and the fact that as he's, you know, getting ready to crash this plane, he's talking to Peggy was 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 really well done. And even though, you know, hey, he's going to come back, it was still kind of like, wow, you know, it, here is here is this this stuff. And um, they they do kind of set up um, why he was able to survive. It's, it's kind of like a throwaway line, but they do kind of why he was able to survive in the in the ice. And again, we got the Avengers preview, which was really good. I, I really enjoyed the Avengers preview. I thought it was very well done and really got me excited about uh, about the movie. Because, I, you know, the Avengers to me, is kinda, it, it seems kind of weird. But if they can do it right, and more importantly, you know, if they can tell the story the right way, I'm not sure... Might be a very long movie, I will say this, but um, I haven't read a lot of the spoilers about the Avengers yet. But you know, um, I have faith in Joss Whedon. I do. He, he's yet to he's yet to uh, he's yet to disappoint me so far. So that's a good thing. But anyways, I've rambled on enough about this movie. Um, if you haven't seen it, you definitely should should go see it. Um, I th I'm pretty sure everyone that has seen this will probably go see it. And if you haven't. Watch my review. Go watch Nightmare Baller's review. That's kind of why I'm doing this, just to do a video response to him. But anyways, with that, I'm out. Have a good one. Later.